dear friends, welcome. Welcome to this beautiful time together as we end 2020. And that's one year I think we have all wanted to end. And we are moving into the new year with the, with the hope and anticipation that God is going to open up new chapters, new opportunities, definitely healing and restoration for all that's been lost and all that's been unwell. It's been a tough year for a lot of us. Some of you are grieving right now for uh, folks that you have lost, loved ones you have lost. And yet, coming to the end of another year in our life, in our history, we want to stop and give thanks. We want to think back to the ways the Lord has carried us. He has carried us through this time. Children are carried. Children who are dependent are carried. A father carries. And as God has carried us through this time, we want to look back and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you that you were there. Thank you. You knew what was I was going through for the times I fussed, for the times I was fast asleep and didn't know what was going on, for the times that I, I couldn't understand what on earth was happening. You just carried me through. Lord, I want to thank you so much for this beautiful occasion. And I want to stop it in the year knowing for a fact that you are my God. That you are God of 2020 and you're God of 2021. You knew 2020 was coming along and you knew everything that we would go through. And you had every resource ready for me and you carried me through. I want to thank you for that. Will you join me this evening as we as we take our thoughts through a journey of God's faithfulness this past year. And as we look back and see that God has been there through it all, through the tough times, through the hard times, through the losses, and through the confusion, the hard days of balancing work, family and, and rest, he has been with us all. And we will be grateful, won't we be? We will be thankful, we will be grateful. You have the words on the screen for you. Perhaps you could just hum along with me as I sing this song. It's one that we love to sing, especially this time of year, through it all. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times when I did know right from wrong But in every situation God gave Blessed consolation And my trials came to only make me strong Oh, 
Oh, I've learned to trust in God. Thank you for this year. Reluctantly for some things, but yet intentionally, I thank you. But if I never had a problem, I never know that God could solve it. And I never know what faith in God can do. You are God and you're God of 2020. And I trust you with the outcomes. I walk along each day I seek to do His will Temptations calling me from everywhere But I know that if I leave things in God's hands The road He chose for me becomes quite clear He's the one who died for me He's given me His own will forever remain faithful to this call and I'll acknowledge him in all I do and trust him with all of my heart I know that he'll be faithful he'll direct my every path the road may seem a little steep the way may seem too hard but I just keep on trusting their plans for me the devil has his too sometimes it's hard to know which way to go no one said it would be easy in God's will but there's no way I can do it on my own but the one who died for me will stay with me to the end take a look at God's word. Why don't we 
Open your Bibles with me to Psalm 90. I want to look at the whole Psalm of Psalm 90 and I want to look at the first verse of Psalm 91 and encourage your hearts this evening with God's word. Let's end 2020 strong. Let's remember the bigness, the greatness, the weight, the glory, the majesty of our God. Let's remember that he's our dwelling place and he has carried us through. I want you to leave with that note, okay? I want you to leave that thought that he has carried you through. No matter what you've been through in 2020, you can be grateful and you can be assured that he has carried you through that. A father carries his children. A father carries his children. A child is wholly dependent upon a parent and they are carried through difficult times. And that's what we want to remember God with. Psalm 90 verse 1. Lord, you have been our dwelling place. Let's just stop right there. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? We haven't lived in 2020. We haven't lived in our homes. We haven't lived in our situations, our contexts, as much as because we are people of faith, lived in God. He is our dwelling place. I mean, can you think of a safer place? Can you think of a better place in God himself? In all of the generations, times have passed, generations have passed, decades have passed. And the one constant that has been has been the Lord. Before the mountains were brought, brought forth and ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You are God. You return man to dust. How many of us have seen a lost or loved one this past year? People we never thought we'd lose. People we were afraid to lose. And many of you are grieving right now for those who we lost this past year. You return man to dust and you say, return all children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but yesterday when it is past and as a watch in the night. Time is nothing before God. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the, in the morning it flourishes, in the, in the evening it's gone. It fades, it withers. Time passes like that. 2020, 2021, gone. God has already gone past 21. He's gone past 22. He knows what the last thousand years were and he knows what the next thousand years were. Everything is but a day to God. For, for, for God our past is his present. Our future is his present. Our life is his dwelling place. For we are brought to an end by your anger and by your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, your secret sins in the light of your presence. For all our days pass under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. Doesn't that sound familiar for many of us? We bring our years to an end like a sigh. It's over. It's done. The years of our life are 70 and perhaps with reason and a little bit of medication, 80. But they are gone. Yet your span is but toil and trouble. And they are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So let's look at a few things. Number one, God is our dwelling place. Secondly, God is powerful, mighty, weighty, and the only constant. Thirdly, time is nothing. It flips in front of him like a clock, like a wind, like, a, like the flood. It just flies right in front of him. And we are but dust and live under the wrath of God. So all we can really hope for is the wisdom to live our lives right. So the psalmist says here in verse 12, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. You don't get a mind of wisdom, you get a heart of wisdom. Teach us to number of days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. It's our food. We live off the love of God. We live off the, 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 the feeding that God gives with his wisdom, his resources, his will. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad in all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us. If you have given us a, a tough year, Lord, ahead, give us an easy year, we beg you. If you've given us a hard few days, give us an easy few days, we beg you. 
Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. What a beautiful prayer. So apt, so perfect as we come to the end of this year. The last verse of Psalm 90 he says, let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Is that your prayer? It's my prayer for you. It's my prayer for myself and my family. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. I don't want to end there. I want to pick one more verse. Just step into Psalm 91 and you'll find this beautiful verse. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He has been our dwelling place. He is the one we have rested in. He is the one who has carried us. Let me give you another verse as we close. Turn in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 4. Isaiah 46 and verse 4. Even to your old age, I am he. And to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry, and I will save. Can I read that again for you? Even to your old age, I am he, and to gray hairs, I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear, I will carry, and I will save. God is the one who carried us. He's the one who saw us through. He's the one who knew what tomorrow will bring forth even while we were battling today. And if you made it to today, if you're still standing, if you're still praising, if you're still grateful, he carried you. He got you through this. Can I give you another verse? Turn with me to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 11. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, Bearing them on its pinions, bearing them on its, carrying them on its pinions. The Lord alone guided him. The Lord alone guided him. Talking about God's servant, talking about his people. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We are his very own, the apple of his eye. My brothers and sisters, if you got through 2020, it is the Lord who carried you. And we will be grateful. We will thank him. We will acknowledge him for all he's done. And we will be found grateful in his sight. Amen. Are you ready to join me for just another couple of songs as we give worship to God? Let's pray together and end this year together as a family, the family of God. And let's give him glory and be grateful in our hearts that he, the Lord, has carried us through. <clears throat> Before your throne of grace, I find rest in your presence, the fullness of joy. In worship, in wonder, I'll behold your face, singing what a faithful God have I, what a faithful God.
everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Man is but a breath. He returns to the dust as God says, return, O man, to the dust. But he goes on. He goes on and on. Lord, teach us to number our days that we may present to you a heart of wisdom. Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much, Lord, for my friend, for my brothers, for my sisters here, for this family. As we're gathered here today, Lord, I want to thank you so much that you are God. I want to thank you that you are their God, that you have seen. You are the God who sees. You have heard. You're the God who has ears. You're a God who knows and you felt our pain. You're not a God distant and far removed from our, from our circumstances, from our fears. The many nights we have laid alone in bed, surfing the ceiling, wondering what tomorrow would bring forth. The many times when we have gritted our teeth and we have gone over conversations and words that have hurt and things that we have struggled with and people that have been a pain or people that have been difficult or people we have let down and the regret of words, words, words. We have been fearful, we have been masked, we have been frightful, we have been tested, we have been set in our homes, we have been quarantined, we have experienced things we have never experienced in our whole life. We have been separated and removed from loved ones Everything that was normal and loving has now become a danger and a risk. And we have been through a pandemic, oh God. But you felt it with us. You walked through with us. You carried us. On your opinions, you carried us. You guided us. And you were there. Man of, man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. Our worthy qualified high priest who has come to this world, who has lived our life, who's felt the pain of the flesh, the pain of rejection, the pain of loneliness, the pain of uncertainty. He has he's watched his friends run from him. Lord, you are a God who knows you're a God who cares. And you're a God who's everlasting to everlasting. Yesterday you were there. Today you are here. Tomorrow you will be there. And you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And in you we find our dwelling place, our foundation. In you we drop our anchor. In you we are centered. In you we are who we are and who we are never changes because it is rooted and bound, grounded in you. Our experience changes. Our days change. Our moods change. Our relationships change. The weather changes, but you do not change. And because you don't change, the foundation beneath us, the rock beneath us, the love between, in, in between us never changes. Never changes. That is what we're grateful for, Lord. And that is why we are with confidence facing 2021 with every hope and assurance that no matter what it throws at us, because we had no clue when 20 started that we'd see a year like that. We got started, we had goals, we had targets, and we thought we were going to have a great year. We wished everybody a great year. And Lord, it was not the greatest. And yet, in more ways than one, it has been a blessing. And we acknowledge that out of all of that, globally, you have brought about blessing. You have brought people together. You have re-engineered the way we think about life. You have recalibrated our values for people, relationships, for wealth and for time. We see, we see health differently. And we see the way we view life differently. You, O oh God, have carried us. And we thank you that you are a faithful God. We thank you that you're not only all powerful and almighty, but that you're also all gracious and that you love your children and that you carry us. Father, we want to be grateful and we want to thank you for this past year. 
And we want to ask you, Lord, to search our hearts and see, Lord, is there, is there any bitterness? Is there any bitterness in our heart for the things that have happened this past year that we are not willing to let go? Oh, God, we don't want to get into another year. We don't want to step into a new year with damage, with baggage from the past. So is there anything that I need to leave behind? Is there anything that I need to let go of? Is there anything you want to change in my life before I step forward? Lord, I don't want to stand on the threshold of just a new year. I want a new me. I want a new me, a new life. People are looking for a better life, but you offer a new life. With Jesus at the center of my life and his goals and ambitions as the center of my life. Lord, is there anything you want me to change and correct in my life? Is there anything I've forgotten that I'm not grateful for, Lord? Have I been an ungrateful, self-centered person this past year where I have not seen the many ways in which you and people around me have blessed me, have loved me, have been there for me, have been patient with me? Have I been blind to the things that people have been, with effort they have put in to look after me, to care for me? Lord, change me, strengthen me, open my eyes, make me grateful, remove bitterness from within me. If I'm harboring anger, if I'm harboring any kind of resentfulness, Lord, remove it, cleanse me that I might be yours afresh. I love you, Lord. We love you and we want to be grateful. We want to be thankful for this past year. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for carrying us. Make us comfortable being in your your arms. We don't want to be like those little children. Let me down, let me down. Restless, wanting to run off in their own direction. Run into trouble. Come back wounded. Lord, we want to be children who are comfortable in the Father's arms. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, let's get together one last time. Put your hands together with you sing with me. My soul, do you not know? I've been a her. It's a told from the beginning. The Lord our God is on your side. My soul, don't be afraid. Open the law, Lord, by his righteousness and power. He will strengthen, he will guide. I will console. a happy new year I love you and I look forward to a great year of worship 
of ministry, evangelizing, mission, serving God. Let's do it together. Let's do it strong. Let's start afresh and give God our best. What do you say? Happy New Year. Bye-bye.